Peace, peace, peace. Welcome to the Revolutionary Wealth Builders channel. Welcome for the first time and welcome back for others. Please like, share, and subscribe. Like, share, and subscribe. Please share this video with all those that you know and love. This is the Revolutionary Wealth Builders channel where we bring wealth education to the people. I was on a social media platform earlier today and one of the commenters asked a question, what is debt and what is low debt? I had made a comment and I said, low debt to no debt equals low stress to no stress. Any questions? Question mark, question mark. So the commenter said, what is debt and what is low debt asking for the people? So I'm going to answer that question. What is debt? Debt is essentially the purchase of something that you will pay for later at an accelerated price or what we call um what we call the VIG or interest rate, the extras that you would have to pay for that thing. So for example, if you wanted a pair of pants today and you don't have the money, you can buy them on credit. And you get the pants, you get to wear them today, but in two weeks you have to pay the $100 plus 10% interest, so $110. So you pay more for the pants than they were actually worth because you had to pay for the borrowing the money itself. When people loan you money, they want the assurance that when they deploy their money out into the world, that they will receive something back for loaning it to you. They earned it in theory and they own it and it's theirs and it's in their possession. So they, if they loan it to you, they want you to give them back extra. That is what we call interest. So debt essentially is when people buy things typically that they don't need and they can't afford in order to secure those things in that moment, and then they have to pay for them later. Why do I say they can't afford them? People will say, well, I got money and I have credit. I'm going to tell y'all right now, y'all not, you, you're not going to like me after we're done with this video. This, we're going to try to do this video in five to seven minutes, but you're not going to like me when this video is done because the majority of us live off of debt. And when we're done talking, you're going to be mad at me. So a lot of people, there's a big difference between debt and leverage. Leverage is a strategic move to borrow money from an entity in order to leverage that money to make money doing something else. And then you repay that money. Debt is simply buying something today with no money and then paying for it later. So essentially, you are auctioning off and mortgaging off your future earnings in order to have something that you can't afford today. Because if you could afford it, you would buy it cash. Very intelligent mathematicians and business people will say, well, why would you spend your own money on things? The wealthy wealthy don't spend their own money on anything. You're right. But the wealthy typically don't buy things to go into debt. Typically, what the wealthy do is they exchange things. They swap them out back and forth, and then they write it off on their taxes. It's a completely different game. It's a game that most of you won't understand and can't really explain to anyone because you're not in that game. Yeah, no, they don't buy the boats. They lease them, but they buy them in their business name, and then they just write it off on their taxes so they still haven't spent any money. No, they don't buy the fancy trips. They don't buy the all of these things. They don't buy the cars. They purchase these things and lease them in the company's name. Then they turn them back in and they file it on their taxes. This is not the same thing. So when people say that wealthy people don't spend their own money, you are correct. But they also are not spending any money because they are recouping it. So that's a different discussion. Leave that alone because you are not really ready for that discussion. So Getting back to debt, typically what poor and impoverished people do is they can't afford something, so they buy it on credit, and then they figure out a way to pay for it later. When you do that, you essentially are proving, in essence, in that moment in time that you can't afford it because you are buying it on credit. If you could afford it, you would purchase it right off the bat. Essentially, what is low credit? Low credit is having a debt-to-income ratio that is low. That means you make more money than you actually are paying out in debt. So if you make $1,000 a month and you're only paying out $100 a month, that's a 10 to 1 credit to debt um, debt, um, debt to income ratio, 10 to 1, because you make $1,000 and only $100 of that is going out in debt. That's a good debt to income ratio. That means you have $900 of a surplus in income to do all of the other things that you want. When your debt 
debt to income ratio becomes 50% and things like that, that's when you're moving into that stressful territory where you can have a heart attack or a stroke. I know you guys don't like to hear this, but just understand where I'm coming from. What, what debt does is it forces you to have to go work. It forces you to have to deal with people that you don't want to deal with. It forces you to have to get up out of the bed early in the morning in the cold to go do certain things. It forces you to have to listen to other people's foolishness. It forces you into places that you don't want to be doing things that you don't want to do for people who you don't like. That's what debt does. And what do all of those things do? It puts you in a bad, bad mental space. What does a bad mental space do? It stresses you out. What does stress do? It lowers the days that you live on earth. So essentially debt will kill you. If you own a $250,000 house, you put 20% down on that house, that's $50,000. You're going to finance the other $200,000 for 30 years. Your house note is going to be somewhere around $2,100 a month for the next 30 years. If you lose your job and you can't pay, you lose the house. You do not own the house, period. You do not own the house, period. You do not own the house, period. As a matter of fact, you don't even start paying into the principal of that particular loan, until about seven to eight years into those $2,100 a month payments. $2,100 a month times 12 is somewhere around $25,000 a year. So you're somewhere, you're somewhere around for 30 years, you're somewhere around six to $700,000 purchasing the house when the house only was a $250,000 asset. But when you're done paying for it, if you ever finish paying for it, you paid $670,000 for the home. But you walked everybody through the house and say, yeah, this is nice, this is beautiful. Oh, that's real nice. Is that granite? Is that this? Is that that? But you bought the house for $600,000 when it was a $200,000 asset. Hopefully in 30 years, it will have appreciate, appreciated to $600,000. This is what we're dealing with in America. As soon as you buy your car and you pull off the car lot, the car depreciates in value by 20%. Immediately, meaning if you drove around the corner, drove back into the car dealership, they would give you 20% less for the car just for the fact that you drove it off of the lot. Did you know that? We buy these things to look good and to feel good about ourselves going into debt, paying white corporate uh, corporations an immense amount of money beyond what these things are worth just because we are unable to sleep at night and live with ourselves trying to keep up with the Joneses. When you buy a $300,000 house with granite and the spiral staircases and all of that other stuff, and you put down 20% on it and you're paying the 80% for the next 30 years, you're just Airbnb in a really nice house. You're renting a really nice house because if you slip up and don't pay your mortgage for four months, you're done. So everything you put in it, the 20% that you put in it and every payment you made up into the four payments you missed, you are done. You're done. You do not own the house. It is debt. A house does not make you money. It is debt. Yes, some properties can appreciate in value. You can sell them at a profit. But the house that you live in will cost you more money than you will make off of it in most instances if you purchase the house on debt. Debt is the devil. Debt is a demon. Debt is evil. And as long as you build a relationship with the devil, evil, and, and that type of entity, you will have a you will live a stressful lifestyle. If anything happens where you hit a snag. What you want to do is position yourself to not be in debt. So that's why I say low debt to no debt equals low stress to no stress. And we know stress can kill you. Debt can kill you. Yeah, you might have 48000 in the bank. You may have money. You may have a surplus of cash and a nice job. But the fact that you are in a contract with someone that is charging you more than what something is worth you essentially are being pimped. They have the money up front. Oh, you want a house? I'm going to loan you the money up front and you just pay me back six, seven, eight, nine, ten percent interest. Oh, you want a car? You want a charger? You don't have the money to pay for it cash? You don't have them. You can't afford it. I'm going to loan you 60000 and you give me 19% interest on this money over a six-year period. And if you miss three payments, I'm coming back to take the car and you can't get none of your money back. It is a pimp game. It is a racket. It is a gamut. When you buy things on debt to feel good, you are building a relationship with the devil. <clears throat> it says in the Bible, don't be a lender or a borrower. Debt is bad. 
That is bad. That is bad. I don't care how nice your house look. I don't care how nice your car look. That is bad. That is bad. That is bad. Leverage is okay if you are intelligent. Leverage and debt are two different things. I personally don't like either, but leverage can make you money. Debt costs you money. Leverage can make you money. That is borrowing money to invest into something that is profitable to return the original principle and you keep the profits. Debt is bad. Debt is bad. Debt is bad. I don't care how good you look. I don't care how many rap songs you make. I don't care how many footballs you throw. I don't care how many basketballs you dunk. If you in debt and you are paying out more than you bring in, you are poor. And eventually time will expose you for not having anything. Think about it like this. I don't have any money. I'm broke. I go get a credit card, a $10,000 limit. I start buying it up, making it rain, eating good every night. Everybody who sees me will say he getting money because I'm using a credit card to buy everything. I'm paying my bills. I'm buying jeans. I'm buying boots. I'm buying Louis Vuitton bags. I'm buying all this stuff on credit. But when the credit runs out and now I'm just left with the debt, what are all those things going to do for me? Debt will kill you. Debt will kill you. Debt will kill you. So for all the wealthy people who of their appearance is opulent, debt eventually will catch up with you. That don't mean I don't love you. That don't mean you ain't my friend. That doesn't mean I don't care about you. And that doesn't mean I don't respect you. The strategy of using debt to feel good and look good, drive a nice car, live in a nice house, will eventually catch up with us. Now, that doesn't mean that we're going to implode financially and lose everything. But eventually, when I say catch up with you, I mean eventually one day you will wake up and say, this doesn't make any sense. So we have to teach our children a better way. I'm going to give you an example. I used to own a car dealership. And I know what debt is and what it does because I used to create, I used to draw up my own finance documents for the people who wanted to finance vehicles. And it's a part of my life that I'm not that proud of because I remember charging people up to 23 to 24% interest on purchasing vehicles, which is one of the reasons why I sold the dealership because I could no longer live with myself doing that. But during the time that I owned a car dealership, um, I remember looking out on my car lot. I remember I had Cadillacs, Range Rovers. I had like this little this little line of cars on the back fence. We called them budget wheels. I had some nice vehicles, a couple of old schools, just cars I could jump in every day, go pick my children up from school and do the things that I needed to do. I had some beautiful, some immaculate old schools, just a lot of nice cars. I had two car notes at the time and I was leasing both cars. And I looked out on this car lot seen all of these cars that all I had to do is throw a dealer plate on the back of one and jump in it and pull off. And I said, how do I own 25 or 30 cars on any given month, but I'm paying two car notes? I said, I must be the dumbest MF in the world paying car notes in two contracts, but I have, I own 30 cars. What sense does that make? Foolishness. It's foolishness. That's why we stay poor because we want to look good for other people. Once those leases were up on those vehicles, I've never owned a car note for myself ever since. Ever since. I've never, ever, ever had a car note. And I never will unless I decide to buy the vehicle in a business name and write the entire cost off to the business on my taxes. When you buy a house and you're walking around that nice 3,000 square foot house and you haven't leveraged the equity and you don't owe and you don't owe less than you paying, you're still in debt. It just look good. It's just pretty debt, but it's debt. And I'm just keeping it 1,000 with you and because that, that's all I can do. Debt is bad. You can have the nicest house, the nicest cars. You, you, can, you can miss me because I know better. I know better. 
The question is, will you be able to sleep stress-free at night if any curveball comes your way, which typically is in inevitable because it is the inevitable cycle of life. I hope this video wakes people up. The truth is what it is. Debt is evil. Debt is the devil. Debt is demonic. Leverage is okay if you are an intelligent and savvy business person. Debt is bad. Debt is bad. Debt is bad. I don't care what nobody else says because if they are saying something the opposite of this, they are lying to you because they want to loan you some money so they can make money off you in the future. Peace and love. I hope this I hope this wakes people up. It's not it's not a pretty discussion. It is what it is. And what what can we do about it but get better? The, the, our, our videos over here is their wealth education for the people. If you want to build real wealth, you have to minimize your debt. Like, share, and subscribe. And um, we'll catch up with you on the next one. Peace.